Hello and welcome to your Faith to Go. Uh, today I have a book haul because I was on Facebook and uh, someone that I am friends with on there called uh, Sarah Griffin Lund uh, was offering her collection of books for free to offer to churches so that our libraries could be filled with them. Uh, she's the senior pastor of First Congregational United Church of Christ in Indianapolis and has served nationally as the Minister for Disabilities and Mental Health Justice for the United Church of Christ denomination. Um, and so that's what her books deal with. Um, we have been given, let's see, her first book was Blessed Are the Crazy, Breaking the Silence About Mental Illness, Family, and Church. She's also got Blessed Union, Breaking the Silence About Mental Illness and Marriage. And then most recently, Blessed Youth, Breaking the Silence About Mental Illness with Children and Teens. Um, and there's a survival guide that goes with that. Um, and I just, first off, I want to thank her uh, for the generosity of sharing these books and wanting to make sure that churches have these on their bookshelves. Um, but also uh, addressing uh, this kind of unspoken issue and bringing it and, and bringing light to it um, that this has always been uh, a part of society and, and quite honestly a part of churches. And uh, what she wants to do is show the ways that churches can be safe havens um, for all kinds of people. We say that we are, we say there's room at the table for everyone, but um, until we learn more and study more and are um, more sensitive and aware of uh, some of the ways that we are diverse, including uh, with the way that our brains work um, and the experiences that we have. Uh, and so I know that Meredith's gonna be using some of the blessed youth uh, information with our youth group this summer. And so I'm looking forward to hopefully getting a chance to read these, but um, they're also available to anyone in the church. Um, so this is the week of offering some resources, but um, I'm just so grateful that um, pastors are continuing, people like Sarah are continuing to write and um, struggle and shed light on all these areas and ways that the church can be present for people. I think one of the things that we are wrestling with, not just you know in our own congregation, but again with the big C church is um, with uh, the fact that COVID will just kind of be our background noise for a while, um, present but not, you know, the front issue like it has been the last couple of years, is about who are we going to be next? We are radically different than who we were uh, a couple of years ago, even uh, longer than that. And so about exploring who we are and how we manifest and live out the good news here in this place. Um, you know, we learned a lot this summer about our capacity for fellowship, not only our desire for it among our own community, but the ways that we can offer it to our neighborhood. Um, the, the sheer number of people that came by for our uh, Wednesday food trucks and on Sunday for the Big Bash for Kids, the number of people who said, oh, I just live right up Wolf Penn Branch Road, or I just live really nearby, is a reminder that our neighborhood needs us. Our neighborhood needs a place to convene. Um, and for now, that may just be for fellowship. But I think uh, one of the powers that the church still has, and I learned this through my Wabash pastoral leadership program is, um, and even through my work with Hoosier Action, is we still have the power to gather people. We have the ability to gather uh, a wide variety of, of people together. Um, and we can offer them services. And maybe that service is uh, bouncy houses and food trucks. Sometimes that's what it is. Maybe it's a safe place for their kids to play and be kids. Maybe it's a place to just sit around and relax. That's an important thing that we can offer um, in addition to the ways that we offer worship and we offer study and we offer um, opportunities for service. But again, I think that's when people want to give and serve. So how do we help reach people with that with giving them opportunities to participate with us to serve? Um, and one of the ways I think we do that is when I think about these books and these resources is how do we learn more about people and what it is they really need? What do parents with young children really need right now? What do people who are retired with uh, grown children and grandchildren, what do they really need? What do single people need now? What do 
uh, married couples need now? What do people uh, of color who, who live in this, in this area, what do they need? What do women need right now? What do men need right now to support them? And so it's uh, an invitation, as I said a couple weeks ago, to increase our curiosity, um, to grow curious hearts that are also willing to listen and to learn, um, to hear what people really need right now in this moment uh, in history uh, from the church, because we have so much to offer. I think that we could be the exact right place for this moment in history, but I think we have to figure out what that means. So we want to offer as many resources and learning opportunities and um, ways to be curious and grow and listen. With that in mind, let's go to God in prayer. God, we still have so much to learn. We are so grateful for the minds and the hearts and the souls that you have given us to be curious, to be open, to be listening for what it is your people are crying out for, whether it is simple or whether it is complex. We know that people still need you. They still need meaning. They still need community. They still need a place to make a difference and a place to rest and a place to be nourished and a place to be challenged. We know your church can be all those things. Help us to live that out as authentically and fully as you want us to be. Help us to continue to build your realm here in this place, in this community, among these people, in this neighborhood. We ask your blessing on all we do. We pray for the courage and the curiosity to do it. And we ask all of this in Jesus' holy and beautiful name. Amen. As always, my friends, be well, be safe, keep learning, keep listening.